ICA has been blessed with a, pa a great pastoral team, and I'm privileged to introduce to you today the one that the Lord has sent our way, and that uh, we've been looking forward to his coming for some time. It was all confirmed Thursday, uh, Wednesday night or Thursday morning, and uh, I'm grateful that they are here as a family. They will be with us uh, and serve with us and uh, help in the ministry, and it will expand the outreach of the church in tremendous ways. The things that we've been praying and planning for for a long time uh, will uh, begin to take place and un unfold. And uh, we are grateful for the way the Lord has blessed us, and all the pastors will continue, and they will continue in a tremendous way and be able to focus on the calling that God has called them. But the addition of this new pasture will bring tremendous uh, depth uh, to the ministry of the word and also to pastoral care. And so he will focus his time and his family will focus their time in offering uh, pastoral care and outreach to other communities as well. And so we will unfold a lot of those things in the coming days. But this is an intimate time for us as a church family. And uh, a lot of the things that may happen today, they may not remember because they are still in a jet lag. And uh, so I wanted them to be totally awake and uh, totally alert. And this is just the third day. And so, and then we will have a formal uh, welcome next Sunday. So I'm grateful that the Lord has allowed us to uh, have them with us. And it'll be a tremendous addition, a tremendous blessing, a tremendous asset to the ongoing ministry of India Christian Assembly. And this year is a special year because this year the Lord has, uh, is enabling us to complete our 30th year since we have functioned as a church. Lali and I came to California 40 years ago this month. And uh, we used to conduct prayer meetings from the uh, month that we came. And, uh, and then, but we met in many different places and fellowship. And the Lord enabled me to start ICA officially as a church 30 years ago. So we will have a time of celebration. And uh, we will have a special day on the 30th of September. So if you would block that day. 30th of September, and if you need to get leave, uh, please get leave, and we will have a special day celebrating that, and it will be a very special day from the children to the adults. There will be a tremendous time of ministry. Uh, now I want to introduce to you uh, Thomas, Pastor Thomas Cherian, and uh, he, I have known him for a long time. I have known his parents for a long time. I've worked with his father very closely. We work together in uh, the northwest part of uh, India. He has been serving as a missionary, his father, for nearly four decades. And uh, a great godly man, a great missionary couple who has led many, many non-Christians and Muslims to the Lord. And a tough place. And so Thomas grew up there. So his Hindi and Urdu is chaste Hindi and Urdu. Uh, not the corrupt uh, Hindi that we speak in South India. Or so it's very chaste, very pure. And you will uh, uh, love, if you are a Hindi Urdu speaker, you would love. But Thomas also studied in Kerala. And so he made an effort to uh, study, to speak in Malayalam. Uh, because he had to uh, go from place to place. He had to read bus signs. So he forced himself to learn how to read. He first thought he would read, uh, study only two, two uh, alphabets because if he understood those two alphabets, he would know the bus signs as to where he needed to go. But found out that he ended up in a wrong bus because there were several other buses with the same, uh, you know, starting with the same alphabets. So he made an effort to st study Malayalam as well. And uh, then he had the privilege of uh, ministering in North India, and he ministered and taught in Dehradun in UP for several years. And for the past 14 years, he's been teaching as an adjunct uh, lecturer at India Bible College and Seminary. 
And so we have been blessed and uh, to have him there, and he's one of the most loved teachers and faculty at India Bible College and Seminary. And so I've uh, known him for a long time, and uh, uh, I'm privileged, and I started talking to him about coming a few years ago, and we spent time in prayer, sharing, and all that, and finally he consented. I asked him to come and uh, lead different ministries in different areas, but because he was engaged in other areas, uh, he said, no, I cannot at this point. And those were all significant ministries within India. And then I said, I'm going to make one more attempt and to see. And so he consented and we prayed and finally things worked out. And so uh, all the things finally came into, uh, fell in place. And as of last Thursday, everything was confirmed. They were able to get, get here without any problem. So he will be uh, part of the pastoral team, and he will continue the teaching ministry. Pastor Matthew will be our teaching pastor, will continue to minister. Pastor Papi will continue to teach and be the minister of prayer. Santosh will be the minister of music and worship and help in administration. But Papi's coming will help with pastoral care. It will be a tremendous asset. And also we will be starting new Bible studies in the days to come in new places, in different places, and start new ministries as well. So his coming will be a tremendous, tremendous asset. He has ministered as an evangelist in 25 states of India. He has taken the gospel and is very passionate about uh, evangelism. 20 years ago, when we were ministering in the, the uh, Bible college where he was teaching in UP, NTC or New Theological College, he was assigned to escort us to Haridwar. Uh, Haridwar, as you know, is a, um, a sacred place for the uh, Hindus and thousands of people come there. And he was escorting us and as is typical of uh, uh, Thomas, uh, wherever he goes, he takes tracks with him. And he gave a track to a Hindu, and he started conversing with him. And I was listening behind as I was following him. He may not remember any of this. Uh, he doesn't remember what happened day for yesterday. Now, <laughs> this is 20 years ago. And as he began to witness, this guy began to ask questions. And he was sort of uh, uh, retorting, uh, uh, trying to give a rebuttal to what he was saying. And all of a sudden, a cow comes in between him and this man, and I'm behind him. And, uh, but Thomas kept pursuing him, and the cow was in the middle. And of course, there's a lot of flies. You go to any sacred place in the, uh, of Hindus in India, there's a lot of flies. And uh, the cow with the tail was you know, going back and forth like this, uh, trying to ward off the flies. And one time, the tail almost hit his face, and he watered off the tail with his left hand. And, but he still kept pursuing him, and I really admired that. That image has never left me. When the cow comes in between and there are hundreds of people in between walking, he pursued that person to share the gospel. So that gives you a little glimpse of the kind of person he is and how he's persistent in sharing the gospel with others. So he's passionate about evangelism, and he has personally... Uh, uh, ministered and witnessed the gospel uh, to all kinds of people, from the young people, and he's uh, most sought after a youth speaker in India, ministering in 25 states. So he has functioned well in the office of an evangelist. He has also pastored, he has pioneered churches, he has helped students to go pioneer churches and helping them to plant churches. And the most recent church that he has pioneered and pastored was in Bombay. And so he has ministered in the toughest state in North India and UP for several years. He has ministered for 14 years in our Bible college and seminary in Kerala. And very well loved by all the students. And we have you know, students every academic year. It ranges from 30 to 40 different language groups that are represented in our student body. So trying to relate to all of them. And... Uh, uh, the only person that has met him before, and it was a surprise, was Carolyn. And Carolyn came yesterday, and they looked at each other. We have sat together and dined together at the Bible College. And so, that, so he has been a blessing in the context of the ministry of a teacher. So he has functioned as a teacher, and he continues to function as a teacher. 
and he has also been a pastor and also helped students in pioneering places and himself has planted a church. So he brings to us, uh, uh, to our body, a combination of gifts, the gift of evangelism, uh, the gift of shepherding, and the gift of teaching. So we are so blessed to see that he uh, comes to uh, bless us in the ministry and expand our outreach. And our vision has always been to proclaim Christ and to plant churches and to share the love of Christ that we have experienced. So uh, he will aid and it will be a tremendous blessing and I believe God has great things in store for us. Another reason why I enlisted him and, and asked him to join us is because uh, he is uh, um, uh, a multicultural person and with the gift of multicultures. And we have eight to ten different languages represented in our uh, body. And we reach out to people from all different backgrounds. So I'm grateful that uh, Thomas uh, speaks English, he speaks Malayalam, he speaks Hindi, he speaks Urdu, uh, he speaks Punjabi, and he also teaches uh, Hebrew. Uh, he, his education background, he has a degree in science, a bachelor of degree in science, he has a master's degree in sociology, and then he has his theological degree, BD, which is a four-year uh, program. And then he has also specialized in Old Testament and has earned an MTH, a Master of Theology in Old Testament. So he's been teaching Old Testament and teaching uh, students how to study Hebrew as well. So he brings to us uh, a varied background and raised as an MK, meaning a missionary kid, raised as a PK, meaning a pastor's kid, he has imbibed a lot of uh, spiritual lessons, which is not taught in the seminary. And so I'm grateful for the experience that, that he has had and how God has prepared him for the last 25 plus years in the ministry for us in this place. And I pray that his time and their time together will be a tremendous, tremendous blessing. And uh, God has also blessed him with a lovely, beautiful wife who is committed to the Lord, Karen. And Karen has, uh, uh, was raised in Bombay and uh, speaks Hindi, speaks Malayalam, speaks English. And uh, what are the languages? Marathi? Marathi. And uh, so um, raised in a city a little bigger than Rancho in Ontario. <laughs> okay, Bombay has bypassed 20 million people, greater Bombay. So, and has been raised in Bombay. And uh, if anybody can drive in Bombay, you can drive anywhere else. And uh, by, by the way, she has a driver's license, an international driver's license. And so she will navigate very well in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, of course, both of them drive, but he has to get his driver's license here. And so we pray that God would help them in all those uh, situations. So uh, raised, uh, born to a missionary family, from Kerala, who have spent all their life, uh, the past four, 40 years in Jammu, raised there in that context, and so have the uh, flavor, and uh, speaks Urdu like a native, and speaks Hindi like a native, and then he has uh, so, so many connections, and ministered in uh, one of the toughest places for a number of years in UP, and in Bombay, we are fortunate to have him, and we welcome them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So would you join with me in giving a warm applause to Thomas and Karen uh, Cherian? And I welcome them in the name of the Lord. And I want you to open your hearts and decide that uh, you're going to love them, you're going to receive the ministry from them. Let's give them a hand, Jeremy. <laughs> and uh, we are going to uh, pray God's choices, blessings upon them. What an honor to meet you, Pastor Thomas, uh, Karen, Kevin, and Kessia, right? Uh, um, uh, I know God has brought you to this place at a, like a, was an said, at a, such a time as this. And I know God is going to do a lot of wonderful things through you. And years from now, we will be able to look back and be proud of 
proud to say that I have worked with Pastor Thomas and, and Karen and Kevin and Kesia, and they have been part of, and we will have that blessing. I know that I'm not a prophet, but I can see that God is going to do some amazing things through you in, in America. Uh, but having said that, the picture Walson Angle painted today, that you with the left hand on a cow's tail and right hand the Bible, nothing is going to outlive that picture. So that's going to be the most memorable picture. That, that's such a story. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That speaks a lot about you, too. Um, Walson, so I got, I got this text message from Walson Engel at 2 o'clock in the morning. By the way, this is something you should know as a pastor. <laughs> I don't normally sleep at night. And Walson Engel, as you probably know, he doesn't sleep at night. Pastor Papi, I don't know whether he has slept after coming to California in the last two years. <laughs> So our office opens at 2 o'clock in the morning, and pastoral meetings are like 3 o'clock in the morning. So, that, so don't lose the jet lag. It will help you in the future. <laughs> so Walsall well, sent me a text saying that, asking me to share a word of uh, encouragement or promise. And I, I couldn't think of a word of encouragement or promise. Uh, but, uh, but there is a word of advice that came to my mind, uh, which was uh, an advice which was given to, be, to me by another the pastor. Um, so 18 years ago, that's when I decided to take my switch from, you know, I had a very different life. Uh, but we immigrated to Canada. This was 18 years ago, 17 years ago. And uh, we were in a, you know, the first thing after coming to uh, Canada, you know, we were going to different houses and eating, like the pastor was saying, we were going to these different places and eating and eating, and that's what we, so anyway, so we were new, and we were eating and eating, and you know, all that, and I was cherishing this dream of going into ministry, but I did not dare to say that to anybody, because I used to be an engineer, my in-laws got my, you know, I got married to my wife because I had, I had an engineering degree, and I didn't have the guts to say that I want to go into ministry. That could create a lot of uh, ripple effect. Anyway, so only my wife knew that I wanted to go into ministry. So we go to California. We go to this big, uh, one of these big feasts. I don't know, like, you know, eating. That's all I remember. So after that, I was sitting there. Then I saw a pastor who was there, and he was from Dallas, you know, for us, a foreigner, because we are Canadians. And, and uh, so he was sitting in the corner, and nobody was talking to him. So I thought, this is my chance to just get some advice from him. So I went to him, because I know I'm not going to see him again, because he's from Dallas, somewhere, uh, you know. So, so I told him, Pastor, uh, you know, I have uh, this dream. You know, I'm, I, I want to go into ministry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, but, but I would like to go into ministry. And what do you think about it? Can you, what, what, can you pray for me? Can you give me a word of promise or encouragement? So he looked at me. He didn't say anything for, um, for, a, for a few seconds. And there was a window. And he said, Matthew, look outside the window. Um, what do you see? So I looked outside the window. There was a parking lot. And I saw a very young, very beautiful woman, a white woman, and she was speaking on her cell phone, and she was waiting for her husband or boyfriend to bring the car around in a very pleasant sight. And I said, that's what I see. Then this pastor asked me, Matthew, can, I, can you look at that woman and cry? And I said, excuse me? Like, what did you say? Like, yeah, I'm asking you, can you look at that woman and cry? Um, and I said, no, this is one of the most beautiful things I've seen <laughs> the whole day, you know, after eating and eating. No, there's nothing to cry about. Then he said, and I'll never forget that what he said. He said, Matthew, do you know our Lord is looking right now at that parking lot? And he is looking at that woman. And what he is seeing is not a young woman, young beautiful woman. What he is seeing is a broken soul, a lost soul, inching her way to disaster. And I'm sure our Heavenly Father is crying. And Matthew, if you cannot look at a person on the street and cry, do not ever even think about going to ministry because you will be a curse than a blessing. You would rather be an engineer, make a lot of money, and support missionaries and support pastors. That's what you should do. So unless and until you are able to look at a person on the street, and I will never, was a shock. That's not what I expected. It was not a word of promise. It was not a word of encouragement. Uh, but it really had a paradigm shift. That was like this enlightening enlightenment that went down into my head. Then eventually, as you know, I transitioned to ministry, and I, you know, I was working in some big churches in Canada. And then you get into some of these Western churches in particular. It becomes a job, right? Nine-to-five job. And sometimes you lose it. 
you know, you just become you just become another engineer working in a church. That's what you are. Uh, you you run projects and all that. Sometime then I remember what him saying, and I remember I used to work in the church in Toronto. I will tell my secretary I close my office, and I'll tell my secretary I'm going to have another appointment. I won't be here for the next hour. Then I go to Toronto Public Reference Library, which is a big building right at the heart of Toronto, and there is a lot of bookshelf. I will go sit and behind this bookshelf, and uh, there's this big windows which is overlooking Bloor Street, which is the uh, which is the biggest street in in Toronto. And I will just look at strangers and cry. And I will just cry. And I've never said this to anybody. This is the first time I, I'm just saying this to anybody because it was, was my secret, in, in a sense. I will just look at people and cry. And after one hour, I go back and I resume my, my duty as a pastor because it was very important for me to... to because after a while, you, we, we all tend to lose it. So, uh, so that has always helped me to be incarnational, uh, you know, the, 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 one of the, you know, just, just uh, as, a, as a thought and as a scripture you all know is that the Lord, I always uh, wonder, what is, the, what is the biggest experience God had? You know, as, as God, you know, what would he had uh, done, the, the best thing he could share with, you know, we, we, we share our experiences with people we love, right? We want to share our experiences with people we love. That, that's, that's what friendship and relationship. So I always wonder, what was the biggest experience God wanted to share with us? What was the biggest thing he did? Creation? No, creation is nothing for God. It's like, it's like making an omelet in the morning, right? Like, you know, God did creation like making an omelet in the morning. That's what it is. He's God. Creation is nothing. But I think, in my, ex in my view, the biggest thing God experienced is incarnation becoming a human being although he existed in the form of god and he did not require he did not regard the equality with god a thing to be grasped and he emptied himself taking the form of a servant being in the likeness of man and he became obedient obedient to the point of death i think that was the most Wonderful experience, poignant experience God ever experienced in my understanding. And ministry is a call into that experience. Ministry is not, God doesn't need Matthew or Pastor Thomas, and we all know that. God is, ministry is rather an invitation to share that experience of being incarnational, being, you know, looking at the world through God's eyes and breaking the heart. Uh, you know, wherever God's heart break, you know, where our hearts can also break and, and look at the people on the street and cry and their experience of incarnation. So that's what I wish for you. And that's what that particular man, I haven't really seen him after. I don't know where he is. I don't even know anywhere about, but that was, that was a lesson I learned. Even nothing in my seminary, uh, you know, I can't recollect, but, but this is something very instrumental. So that is my wish for you, Pastor Thomas. And I know you already have it, and that's why God brought you. And, and we know Walsh and Uncle uh, chooses somebody, and that, that itself uh, talks a lot about you. So looking forward to working with you as a church. Again, welcome. You, we're welcoming you. Thank you. Yes, God has a plan and purpose for every one whom he create, that means we are his creation, right? So wherever he is sent, whatever he, we are, you know, he's intended us to do, you know, if we are, you know, able to do, and we, are, we, we, if we surrender ourselves in his hand, definitely God will, you know, uh, use, fulfill that purpose in and through our life. And I, I, when I heard that Pastor uh, Thomas, uh, you know, coming to this place, I heard from Pastor Walson when he was sharing about, you know, uh, you know, a new pastor is coming and all that. Um, I, I'm so excited. You know, I was so excited because, you know, it's, it's always good. If, as Pastor Matthew said, if Pastor Wilson picks somebody, that means there's somebody great. And he has something, God, God, the, the God-given wisdom in him that ordinary people cannot see through, that certain people can see. That wisdom, you know, God has given to uh, Pastor Walson, and uh, and when I heard that, it was really, you know, happy. Uh, already, Pastor uh, Walson welcomed the, you in the Pastor Thomas and uh, Kezia, uh, Karen and uh, Kezia and uh, Kevin into this family, and we welcome you into our lives. You know, 
personally. Uh, you, you, you don't need to take uh, and come and you know uh, take an appointment. Anytime you can come and knock, and you know you can just step in, and we can you know we'll have wonderful uh, time together. And uh, uh, what I understood from all this is that God has brought Pastor Thomas and his family into this ICA family with a special task. That church needed, and and. We know that, but we are unable to, you know, specific, you know, distinguish it or specify it. But you know, God knows, and to fill that gap, you know, God has led Pastor uh, Thomas and his family into our midst. And when I talk about, uh, you know, I say this is a right place to begin with, or to end with, or in the middle of our course of our race, whatever it may be, spiritual or our family, or whatever it may be, it is a right place. I understand that way. Because when I came here, that's the way I can explain, you know, you know how the church will, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, take care of us. When we came to this place, we came to California, we never ever thought that we are going to visit California. We never ever thought. But God brought us into the Southern California unexpectedly, maybe within a few months of things that, that we don't have, but God has that in plan. But when we came here, before we come here, we came here as part of our ministry or training or development, ministry development, all that. But when I started my spiritual journey, it started from Mumbai. That's in 1983 when I left my place, Kerala, to go to my college in Mumbai I studied in, uh, in uh, Dadar. There's an engineering college called uh, St. John's College, Dadar West. I studied there. I finished my engineering. I, then I joined uh, as a plant operator or central air conditioning and refrigeration plant operator in the uh, uh, first computerized telephone exchange in India, which is in Valley. So where I was working, where in a good position as an apprentice, very nice. No problem, it's under central government. All that, 1983, young boy, you know, years to go. When everything was building up, God brought this call into my life. I left that one and joined the Bible College in 1988. Ever since, I'm in that line. No matter what, whether it is for good or for, for bad, we are in it. There are, it is, every time it is not a smooth ride. There are sometimes like a roller coaster ride. You can go up, sometimes you will be deep down. Nobody knows that, only you know that one, only we know that one. But in every situation, if we surrender our life in the hands of God, definitely God will take us through. That's what I learned. From there I learned, then I joined, went to Delhi. I, I worked, there, uh, worked there as a pastor and teacher, then I went from there to COTR, I worked there, I worked there as a teacher as well as the registrar, then from there we moved to Patan Court, from there we went to uh, Jammu and Kashmir, when I went to a little bit about uh, you know, Himachal Pradesh, then from there we came to, you know, um, uh, came to U.S., then back to Nagpur for several years, then back to Kerala, then back to here. See, just imagine the way God takes us through. When you put these all lines, took at all the points, the day God, you are born here, the way you lived, the day God called you, the way God lead you, and each point you put, then finally connect all that. You can see the full picture, the panorama of God's plan on this earth. And we all are part of that plan. We are not here by chance. None of us. We know we have a great pastor. Pastor Walson, I, I love to sit under his feet like Paul sat and studied under the feet of Gamaliel. So much wisdom. That wisdom we need to survive here. Without that wisdom, it is impossible to confront the challenges of this earth. The people, those who are, you know, we are meeting every day. Without that wisdom. So I learned that one. We have Pastor Matthew, amazing teacher. I'm thrilled when I hear. But nowadays I'm missing Sandosh messages. I don't know. It's an amazing speaker. Great. Wonderful. And that is not limited there. We have everyone who are sitting here are ministries in their respected area. Whether you're working in the 
women's ministry, a youth, men of God, team, Sunday school, wherever. We all are, you know, that way. Only we can fill that one. If you, you know, when God brought us and fixed us in this parcel, if you move out, the whole stays there. Don't move out. Strengthen. That stays there. Only we can fill that one. And now we are very glad that Pastor Thomas and Karen are with us. That's amazing. It's, it's, it's always strengthens. It's always, you know, uh, uh, help us to stand together. You know, devil comes with uh, thousands and thousands of years experience. We have only 50, 60, 70 years we live, right? We have only that many experience, that many years of experience. If we put together all people, those are sitting here, 100 into 100 years. We, if we live 100 years, 100 people into 100 years is coming 10,000 years. Satan is there with more than 10,000 years. So we all have to stand together, put our energy, put our wisdom, put our knowledge, put our spirituality, then work hard. Then only we can confront him. When we confront him, he won't stand if we confront him in the name of Jesus Christ or with the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Pastor Thomas and Karen, for accepting Pastor's invitation and being part of this one. This is a great place to begin with. This, from here, you can, you know, you can, we can grow. You can extend and expand. You can expand east or west or north or south. Not only that, you can, we can expand towards heaven, grow in spirituality. We can reach there. That's the ultimate goal. If we miss that one, then we miss everything. So this is the right place. This is a good place. God bless you. And also, I know that God has a you know, great plan and purpose about you through this ICA and also for this community around us, maybe Southern California or maybe, you know, throughout the United States of America. So uh, I really um, welcome uh, into us, into church and all you know, all of us, and we thank you. It's a new beginning for you, but it's a, it's, a, it's a new chapter of your life. This new beginning, new beginning to all of us, a new beginning to ICA. Definitely, God will bless us. Uh, before I sit uh, down, go back to my seat, let me read a Bible verse that God has given me in relation to the promise the pastor asked me to share a promise. So in relation to that, I took for that uh, Psalm number uh, 37, verses 3 to 6. Psalm number 37, verses 3 to 6. It says like this. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is for us, okay? Now, how God, what God is going to do, what we need to do. Verse 5 says, Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. Verse 6. He will make your righteousness shine like a dawn, and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. If we, as a church, joining together, standing together, Commit our ways to the Lord and trust in him. And he will do this not only for us individually, for our family, for the church, for the community. It's for everybody, for his church. He will do. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. This is what I want to say. God bless you. Thank you. The Lord called your name. Green olive tree, lovely and of good fruit. And that's a promise I want you to hold on to. And I will share more about that, God willing, next Sunday. I want you to repeat after me, and I want you to claim this as a promise for yourself. This is how God views you. This is how God pictures you. This is how God wants you to see yourself. This is the identity that the Lord is giving you. So would you repeat after me this promise that the Lord gave through Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 16. The Lord called your name. Green olive tree. Lovely. And of good fruit. One more time. The Lord called my name. Green olive tree, lovely and of good fruit. Meditate on that promise this week. 
And remember, the Lord called you by a name. He's given you a new name. And that new name is what? Green olive tree. Lovely. And of good fruit. That's your name. So this week, if somebody asks you, what's your name? <laughs> See, I'm a green olive tree. <laughs> I'm lovely. I'm beautiful. <laughs> I'm handsome. And by the way, I'm very productive. Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in Jesus' name, dear church. Uh, I just wrote it down so that I may not miss anything of it. Um, I thank and praise God for the privilege and opportunity to be uh, with dear Wals Nangal and dear Ranti, uh, Santosh and Sneha and with all the dear ones of ICA Church. Uh, India, Sebi, hum greetings lekar aate hai. Um, yeah. To start with, God uh, blessed us with two kids, and as Uncle said, I'm not going to repeat it again. Uh, just to go directly uh, into how God brought us here, uh, right from the time Uncle shared uh, with my husband uh, about uh, ICA Church, uh, we had been praying about it. Uh, even though we have not seen each other, uh, we were still praying for uncle and auntie and for you all, um, uh, remembering uh, you all holding the book and booklet of the testimonies of each family. We were holding that and uh, praying about it. Two months back, uh, we were in prayer and we were listening to a testimony of a man of God uh, through internet and um, it was Saturday and the man of God, he uh, preached like this that whenever he goes into ministry and uh, he, God asks him to turn, make a turn in his ministry, he asks God for a sign. So when uh, I heard this, I uh, prayed a prayer uh, in my heart regarding this, and I asked, Lord, Lord, if you're going to take us to U.S., then uh, you show us a sign. And uh, uh, it was a Saturday, and the next day was Sunday. And I asked the Lord, it was Saturday afternoon, I said, Lord, Sunday, uh, I did not share this with anyone, uh, not even with my husband, it was only uh, between me and God. And I uh, said, Lord, Sunday, I should hear from anybody's mouth or you should show it in writing, the place California. And the next Sunday, we went to our church uh, and when we stood there for worship, my eyes fell on the worship leader's t-shirt and it was written on that T-shirt California. <laughs> and we took it as a sign that the Lord is uh, with plan and purpose, the Lord is going to take us to this place. And, uh, and we continued praying not only that, the Lord uh, spoke through many uh, men and women of God about uh, play about the place here that uh, the Lord showed with many signs and spoke through them uh, uh, through uh, this and uh, furthermore we can say that God fulfills his promises and his promises never fail um, I would like to thank auntie uncle and all the brothers y'all came to pick us up from the airport, and especially uh, all the dear sisters who took the trouble. Uh, as Uncle said yesterday, that time is very precious here, and you all took the trouble of making the house so comfortable, so beautiful for us, looking into every minute details. And we were so overwhelmed. Thank you so much uh, for everything. And for all the delicious food that you all have cooked for us, I, I thank each one of you for that. And I, well, last, I, but not the least, I want to thank my God for his great faithfulness in our life. My, our God is faithful. He uh, fulfilled everything that he has done 
And still there are many more promises that need to be fulfilled. We are waiting on the Lord. There is a plan and purpose. We believe that God has called us here. Thank you, Church. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a Punjabi praise the Lord, which I don't want to do that today. <laughs> okay. Uh, once again, I want to thank the Almighty God for this opportunity the Lord has given me. Respected Uncle, Auntie, Pastor Matthew, Pastor Papi, and all dear ones who have come here. I want to greet all of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a real honor to be here in the midst of God's people in the United States, in California, because it's the first time we are visiting any part of the Western world. I've been to the Eastern world, uh, to Thailand and uh, other nations, but here is the first time. So standing in the Sunday service in the pulpit for the first time in this part of the world, uh, it's uh, kind of a very, very precious moment for me, for us as a family. Uh, I want to first of all thank God for giving this opportunity and want to thank Uncle Anti and the rest of the team for making everything comfortable for us. Just like my wife said, every minute detail, even I found out that even the hotels and all, if you go and stay, you don't find that detailed uh, <laughs> facilities which were given to us, taken care. I understand that each one of you take care of the guests who come here. And <clears throat> I was looking back and uh, thanking God for the way the Lord has led us. 20 years back, the Lord had, uh, I mean, I had an opportunity. Somebody gave me a sponsor letter to come to the U.S. That was in 1996 right after my BD studies. I was in the NTC college and there my, I asked my father whether I should go for this. And my father prayed and I prayed and finally he said, no son, you don't have an experience. You stay in India for some time. When the time comes, right time comes, you'll go. So I tore off that sponsor letter and now after 20 years I get another opportunity. I believe this is God's time. And by the time I could see what is India and understand the people there. And now my heart is full of India. Not only India, the whole of the world. And I pray for different parts of the country, of the world. And uh, when uncle was sharing uh, about the incident in Haridwar, I just remember one thing that the president of the college where I was staying, I was working with, he had asked uh, our guest, uncle, Wilson and auntie and the whole family, uh, he has entrusted me to take them to Haridwar. And all what I remember is I had some few tracks which I have brought here also about, uh, so that if we can print here and give it to the people. So I was having holding a, a jhola with me and I was carrying it in the tracks and I was talking to the sadhu there. The rest of the things are all new to me, but uncle remembers and how I was holding the tail of that cow. <laughs> I don't remember, but then, uh, because I wanted that man to be saved, that is what was there in my heart. Thank you, Uncle, for reminding all those story, and I praise God for that. And uh, uh, somebody was pointing out that how Uncle chooses, he has, when he chooses, he has somebody very, he chooses with all kinds of minute details in his mind. But when I was sitting there, I said, Lord, why did he choose me? <laughs> because with all these descriptions and all, Lord, am I really the right person? Am I really the worthy person? And, uh, but I believe that God has given that in his heart. And a lot of promises were there, a lot of promises about us to come to this place. And I believe that God has fulfilled his promise. And I believe in the days to come, God will not only transform California, but the whole of America, not only through Thomas Sharin, but the whole of ICA Church. I believe that where we cannot go, our prayers can go and will transform the nation 
and that will affect the whole world. I can give you one small example how prayer can transform before I get into the world. And I always, wherever I go, I take two minutes to talk about Jammu Kashmir where I was, brown, I was brought up. I always say that my roots are in Kerala, the South India, but my fruits are in Kashmir because I grew up there. So I always tell about Jammu Kashmir and of course Punjab and Haryana are neighboring states of the place where I grew up. You know, Jammu Kashmir is a place with 1.2 crores, I don't know how is it, millions, uh, 100? 10.2 mi million people. So there are 65% Muslims, around 25% Hindus and some Sikh people and then some Christians here and there. 15, 20 years back, you can't find Christians in many parts of Jammu Kashmir, but there are now 22 districts. I can tell you because of people around the world praying for Jammu Kashmir, now we can find Christians in all 22 states, uh, districts of our state. Yeah. And one of my friends, Uncle Menno, Pastor P.T. Chambles and Pastor Lance, he was doing a secret Bible study in a room in Jammu Kashmir in a very, very very, very difficult place. There are most of them are Muslims. And you know the Muslims are very difficult to be reached. And some seekers were there in the room and he was teaching them the Bible. All of a sudden there's a knock at the door. And you know, without appointment, somebody comes and knocks at the door where Bible is being taught. You can understand the blood pressure of the pastor who is teaching. And this pastor was shocked. And he went and gathered some courage and opened the door and there was standing a man with beard. And he's asking the question, Kya aap Bible padha rahe ho? Are you teaching Bible? And this man said, I'm going to have trouble now because they have found us and we are going to, they will burn you if, you, if they find that something th like this is happening. Then he asked, pastor asked, why do you ask that question? Yes, we are teaching Bible. And that man had an interesting story. He said, last night I was sleeping. Around midnight, I saw a dream. In that dream, I saw a table. And the table, two books are like left, kept there. One is a thick book, which is our Quran, the Muslim. And the other one is a very thin book. Is that is an Injil. Injil means our New Testament. And then there was a light falling right on the, that book, which is Injil, that is a thin book. And there's a voice, read this, there is truth inside it. Being an orthodox Muslim, Muslim, I cannot digest that. So I was, I could not sleep after that. Tossing this side, that side. Got up in the morning and st went straight to his father and said, Father, I saw a dream like this, what should I do? And the father said, son, two days back I also saw the same dream. And because of fear I did not tell anybody. Now it's confirmed that there is something in this. So let us go and find out who teaches this in Jeel and learn about uh, what is there. So that is how we found the address from somebody that this in Jeel or Bible is being taught in this place and that is why I have come here. I want to know about Jesus. Amen. And Pastor Lance shared the gospel and he accepted the Lord and he became an evangelist later. <laughs> you believe that? Where you cannot go, your prayers can go. Yeah. And I believe in the days to come, I see a church, as you have been doing, continue to pray, and there's going to be, as uncle said, going to be a great revival in California, in United States, and in this world. And I trust that nothing is impossible for God. I believe that. And also, we need a lot of prayers, and God will do wonders in the North Indian community as well as we have been praying and envisioning. This morning I would like to share one word uh, from um, God's word that is Psalm 29 verse two. Uh, it's not going to be exegetical or expository, just a few thoughts. Psalm 29 verse two says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The psalmist uh, David, who is one of the best musicians and the worship leaders and the composers of the psalms, 
explains or says that ascribe to the lord the glory due his name unless we understand the greatness of his name we cannot worship him and when we understand the greatness of his name and worship him everything that we need will come to pass we don't need to ask god the healing will take place deliverance will take place and all kinds of things will take place because we are worshiping him the way we we are supposed to many times we are not able to that is why the real glory of god doesn't come down now when i think about the name of god there are various titles in the old testament uh, which talks about uh, god you no know, people have given him various you know, have called him by various titles like jehovah rafa jehovah shalom jehovah nisi el shaddai el olam el elyon el gibor like that and one of the titles which uh, uh um, which which is there, there are more than 1000 titles in the bible but one of the titles which we uh, see is uh, god the creator god the creator i just want to say a few things from there and in within 8 to 9 minutes i'll stop but at the same time uh, i want to thank pastor matthew and pastor papi for those wonderful encouraging word i was enjoying sitting there and also the word which came from uncle See there is one verse in Genesis chapter 1 verse the first verse in the Bible in the beginning God created heavens and the earth the first verb in the Bible is created and the Hebrew word is bara i want to focus on that word this morning bara created and Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 uh says like this do you not know have you not heard the lord is everlasting god the creator of the ends of the earth he will not grow weary or tired and his understanding no one can fathom i want to focus on that word creator of the ends of the earth the title given is he is the creator somebody said yeah he created everything it was just like preparing omelet in the breakfast breakfast for god it is nothing but have you understood the word creator have you understood the word bara in hebrew now in the old testament whenever you give a title or a name to somebody that signifies his qualities his personality so when we are looking at the word creator we are going to understand his personality his character what is the meaning of the word bara in hebrew there there are many various meanings but one of the meanings is bara means uh, something which no one else can do bara is the word which means that something which no one else can do there are two words in hebrew one is asa and another one is bara asa means to make bara means to create and the word bara is used only and only for yahweh for god in the old testament not for man i and you can make asa a thing and make a dairy or a, if i know some technology i can make this but only god can bara do that which i and you cannot do that is what is the meaning okay and we see that in the book of genesis he did all what man cannot do in 6 days time and you see that we can understand that in from two point of view one from a general point of view and another one from a specific point of view let me start with the general point of view what is that from a general point of view god god did something which man cannot do and we all know that like pastor matthew was telling that he became man he became man the almighty god became man and more than that the that same god came and died on the cross when you see many other gurus and leaders of this world they came and they preached about good things and they showed the way of truth this is the truth but jesus said i am the truth okay so that is why i am dying on the cross 
which no one else could do and will not be able to do and finally he after after his death he rose up from the dead no one else could do three weeks four weeks back i was in jerusalem standing right outside the tomb it is written he is not here he is alive and no one's tomb is like that only jesus has tomb and that is why he can do what others cannot do he is able to forgive the sins and that man who was sick and he jesus looked at him and said your sins are forgiven even the pharisees and sadducees were confused that how can he do that yes he can do that what others cannot this morning those who are listening to me have who have not accepted the lord i will not tell you that what others could not do he can do if you feel that you are not forgiven god is ready to forgive you if you feel that you it's impossible god is ready to do that for you the second thing is from a specific point of view all the physical and emotional needs of ours sometimes it seems to be very impossible difficult but i can tell you nothing is impossible for this bara god you can see that a childless father at the age of 100 is called as dada that mother that woman probably 90 years old is holding a baby in, in her hands people are coming and asking who is this is your grandson no it's not my grandson my my only son and somebody was asking how is that possible it is possible because is bara god he made highway in the sea the red sea it was impossible for even the technology of pharaoh to do that where that that is what god does when man fails of technology fails god says i can do that free food for 20 to 30 million people 20 lakhs sorry 20 lakhs to 30 lakh people in the wilderness for how many years 40 years 40 years free food still they were rebellious still they were not thanking god so that is how god does and what a free water for how many years and see fire fireproof protection inside the in the in the fire three young men standing in the fire inside the fire and they were fireproof they were protected from all kinds any possible danger and you can go on go on in the bible you can see how god was able to do what others could not do in our personal lives also we can see as a family i witnessed many miracles physical and emotional miracles in northern part of india one after other you might have also seen that it's a very ca- a usual thing in north india go and somebody prays and things will happen and i i believe that god is going to do something miraculous even in this church also doctors might have said many things but i tell you i can tell you stories about my son and daughter later on i can tell you how god has done when doctor said no god said yes i can do that i can assure each one of you if there is anything the doctor said said is impossible god is saying it is possible because i am bara god i can do what others cannot do i i i know the story of a young man uh, he was in the army he was a soldier and uh, he was only believing brother the rest of his battalion which consisted of around 40 to 50 soldiers they did not believe in jesus so the officer used to make fun of him because he was he, he always used to talk about jesus jesus and all so one day the officer wanted to make fun of him and uh, asked him to uh, uh, you know park a vehicle which was standing there uh, to somewhere here and this man uh, did not know how to drive properly but still because the officer had commanded him he went and uh, you know started the vehicle and from there he brought somehow brought and parked the vehicle there and as soon as he was coming out of the vehicle he saw all the 50 soldiers including the officers officer crying the tears were rolling down their cheek and he was amazed to look at them that they were first time they were, they were crying and he asked sir what happened did i do a mistake why are you crying like that that officer looked at him and said now i understand that you serve a true god 
And the soldier did not understand why he was asking like that. He said, you know, I wanted to put you in trouble and I wanted to prove that you serve a foolish God, so I removed the engine from the bonnet. But now, I see that you have started the vehicle, the, st the, in in the, wor the, in the vehicle starts even without engine. <laughs> Your God is a true God. And the soldier did not know that. Our God does which man cannot do. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage each one of you that whether it is a physical need or emotional need, the Lord is able to do that. You see these chairs empty. I believe that this is going to be filled very soon. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. God is going to do tremendous work. People may say that is impossible, but God says it is possible. To take away that negative vocabulary from, from our minds because there is no word like impossible in God's dictionary. God says, I am Bara God. Amen. I will do something new for you this day, in this week. Trust in that God. And when we are worshipping the Lord, worship Him thinking about that greatness of His God, thinking about the title of that God, that He is a Bara God who will do marvelous things. Who, if He can come to this world and become man for us, who can die on the cross and save our lives, can do uh, things like physical healing or emotion. This is nothing. And more than that, for God, God, just like Pastor Matthew was reminding us, we should develop a heart of burden, a, a heart which cries out. Like Bob Pierce said, Lord, break my heart with the things with which your heart is broken. When you see the people around us, let us cry for them. Let us, let us have a burdened heart. And I believe that God, Lord will one day reward us for that. And that is what is the vision of dear uncle and auntie and also the ICA church. And once again, I believe that God is going to do marvelous things in our, in our lives, in the days to come. Let us trust in the Lord. May the Lord bless us. Thank you so much.